Hello there. All right, fragrance-free February, and I am coming to you guys to talk all about the living room, the living space where you spend a lot of your time lounging, relaxing, you, your family, your pets, your friends, whoever it is you have over, uh, and we're going to talk about all the ways that you can make that living room a little bit friendlier when it comes to what you are inhaling. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Lauren. Uh, I am a brand partner with Young Living and I am jumping in and doing this fragrance free February. Say that three times fast because I think it's so important that sometimes we step back and we really understand why the need for the switch. Why do we want to be doing this? You know, we hear things, we see people say things, and we're like, oh, I don't know, that doesn't, that doesn't pertain to me. I've used these products for years, and I'm fine, I'm healthy. My parents use these products, and we're fine. They're sold on the store shelves. That should stand for something. It would be really nice if it did. It would be really nice if it did, but here's the thing. Unfortunately, when it comes to fragrance, it is a tricky beast. It is a tricky beast. And if you're in Europe, you've got a little bit better off uh, here in North America. Um, fragrance can entail upwards of 3,000 different ingredients. So if you were to pick up a product, uh, it's not going to have fragrance on it. You were going to pick up a product. I don't need, I don't, I hope it doesn't have fragrance in it. Um, and you were to see the ingredient list and it said fragrance on it. Okay. The challenge is you are not going to know what is in the fragrance. You might assume, oh, it's probably just some smells they put together. I can, I can smell this. I smell this scent. Maybe they've identified the scent on the product and you smell it and you're like, well, that's, they've put all sorts of smells together to create this beautiful scent, the scent that I love, that I'm using. Here's the thing. Scents, fragrances are considered a trade secret for companies. So it has been um, legally deemed trade secret, which means that because it is a trade secret and because um, it is basically intellectual value property, they do not, they, the company who has created this, who put on their product, they do not have to disclose to you what is under that umbrella term of fragrance. So there could be up to 3000 chemicals and you wouldn't know. If you want to have an eye-open experience, check out the documentary called Stink. Um, it basically goes through a process of a dad who um, looks into, it's got other storylines, but basically a dad who purchased uh, pajamas for his daughter from a tween-focused store, opened the pajama package up. They were wrapped in like a plastic and the smell was overpowering. He's like, why are kids' pajamas covered in fragrance like why do I have this smell this is going right on their body and so he went down a process of looking into it of why what are the rules and and you'll see how frustrating it is and it talks a lot uh he he talks to government he talks to a lot of that um there's one there's one story in there actually and this is where the trade secret thing gets really frustrating there is one story of a um a boy he's a teenager he is unable to attend high school he is extremely allergic, verging on the on the realm of deathly allergic to an ingredient found in a very popular boy body spray. I won't say the name. You can watch the documentary to uh, to to listen to it and to see the story. But he is very very allergic to it, and the family has so the the school has banned people from using the spray. But of course, it's high school and these are kids, and if it's not directly affecting them, they're like, oh, I I don't have class with that guy. He's not going to smell it. I'm I'm completely other end of the school, and they use it, and, and he still reacts to it. So he actually can't even go to school anymore. And the and the parents, the family reaches out to the company and asks them if they can have a breakdown of the ingredients so that they can start to try and figure out which ingredient it is that he is so allergic to, that he is reacting so severely to, and the company won't give it to him. And they have no, there is no, the family has no right, uh, and there's no 
there's no path for them to take. There's no next steps for the family. So they plead with the company, but the company basically says it's our trade secret and we're not letting you know. The company values their profits uh, and their secrets and their competitive advantage more than what the products do to you. And that's the harsh reality of some of this. And that's why they don't tell you what's in the fragrance. And that's it. And there could be a ton of different things. So really when it gets down to it, when we talk about fragrance-free February, we talk about switching at any point, it's not because we want you to just change products and throw out what you have. It's because they can make a real difference because there are so many things that can be found in it. it can make a real difference in your health, your mood, your body's ability to deal with the constant bombardment every day. So think of your body's ability to take in um, all these chemicals. We are bombarded with them every day at every single touch point. I mean, even sitting here at my desk, guarantee I have things that are off-gassing, that have a fragrance that are off-gassing. And they have VOCs, they have volatile organic compounds that I am inhaling. They are not natural. And so my body is now going through the process of working through and detoxing myself from those chemicals, right? It's, it's not normal or natural for all those chemicals to enter into our body. And our body has to work overtime to figure out what to do with it. So the more you can help your body out by providing options that are as close to nature as possible, because guess what? We're from nature. Our body knows what to do with those. Our body knows what to do with those molecules from nature that are natural. They're like, I recognize this. This is very similar to our DNA. I can take this. I know what to do. I'm not scared of this. The rest of the stuff that gets made in the lab and the synthetic stuff, that comes in and now we're like, oh shoot, I don't know. And now our body's reacting. We might have free radicals floating around because they've stayed in our body and we haven't detoxed and now we create a little bit of chaos. It's really important to start looking at some of this stuff and making small steps. And it's not enough to say, I've used it forever and I'm okay. Or my parents used it or my grandparents used it and I am okay. When we know better, we do better. Small steps. And so when we talk about the living room, biggest thing you can do, the biggest thing you can do in your living space is take a look at what you are breathing in, what you are breathing in, what your family is breathing in, what your kids are breathing in, what your pets are breathing in, what your, 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 your guests, it's like, what word am I trying to say? Your guests are breathing in, right? So ditch the candles. They're full of fragrances. There are very few types of candles. Um, that you can diffuse that aren't harmful. A lot of times it's the, dependent on the wax or the wicks that are used and that smell. Very few times you can find candles that use essential oils because one, the heating point of oils doesn't always go well and you have to heat wax so high to form the candles in the mold and you have to add the scent, the aroma to the candles pretty early on when it's still really warm. It takes a lot of extra effort to add it in as it's cooling down. So it takes a lot more time, a lot more skill. So those candles become more expensive, but also you need a lot more essential oil to get the same impactful smell that you do with regular candles, which is what we're used to in our highly consumerized lives. We need that overabundance of smell. We need that smell. If we can't smell it, people are lighting more candles, putting more, more, more. So having oils in it, you need more, more, more oils to, to even equate to that in a candle. So ditch the candles, ditch the air sprays, ditch the plugins that spray into the air. Those are awful. Ditch the uh, wax warmers. Ditch everything that is you have that is putting into your air that is a fragrance. Um, fragrances are known to cause skin irritations, allergies, eye irritations, uh, hormone. They can disrupt your hormones. They can cause liver problems. There's a whole bunch of it. If you look up fragrance, and I will, I will leave you to that, look up fragrance and look up dangers of fragrance or look up uh, ingredients in fragrance and you will see the possibilities. And here's the thing. If it's even an option, if it's even the potential that that could affect you and your family, and there's a almost better alternative, why wouldn't you go for it? So replace it with a diffuser. 
replace it with a diffuser. With quality oils, don't go buy dollar store or retail store oils because they will be full of fragrances and you will have done yourself no, like no good by switching to that. So you're using Young Living essential oils because they are the purest, um, they come from the farms. There is an amazing quality control procedure to make sure you are getting the best. They have hundreds of oils, so you can find any smell that you want. You get that diffuser going, it lasts for three to four hours and your house smells fantastic. And you have eliminated all those chemicals. Think if you were to spray an air spray, an air freshener, and let's say the fragrance in that, let's say we're being kind and it has like 50 ingredients, 50 different chemicals that you are exposing yourself to on today, tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, day after that, day after that, day after that, day after that. Think of the load that's going into your body that you're putting on and your kids and your pets. That's a lot. But now think if you switch, think if you ditch that and you go to the diffuser and you diffuse today and you diffuse tomorrow and you diffuse the next day and you diffuse the next day and you diffuse the next day. Look at all those days with the 50 chemicals that you've eliminated from your lives, from the overload on your body. That's huge. That's one small change. But because it has this compounding effect of removing it every single day, that's huge. That's results in a huge change for your body and allows it right away to start functioning differently and different things. So we can also look in the living room. We can talk about the cleaning products we use, right? If we're cleaning our floors, maybe we're cleaning surfaces, side tables, whether it's glass or wood or metal. I don't know whether other tables you would have, um, but you can do the thieves cleaner for all of that, right? You don't need a million cleaners, all with warnings of don't inhale, don't get on your skin, um, irritant, caution, all that type of stuff. You don't need to clean with that. That also puts fragrance and fumes into the air that then overload your body. So ditch the cleaners. The other thing you can do is switch in the living room, super easy ways to switch in your living room in the areas that you gather, is what you use on your fabrics. So if you wash a lot of the items in your living room, whether it's blankets, now Margot did it all on laundry, then make sure you're eliminating fragrances there because they are now sitting on your body. Um, but also if you're cleaning, if you're cleaning rugs, uh, if you're cleaning maybe couch cushions, you could easily spray some Thief's Cleaner and vacuum up, or you could do baking soda and you could vacuum up. If you want a linen spray, if you want to make a linen spray, instead of using any of those sprays that are full of chemicals that are just advertised in stores, you could easily take your oils, a little bit of witch hazel and some water in a, sh in a spray bottle. Um, you do the witch hazel so that the water and the oil, everything can basically grab onto itself because oil and water don't mix. Um, so the witch hazel helps so they can grab on and then you shake it and you spray around and it's beautiful and it's chemical free. Um, and you've just done yourself a huge service by switching. So when we think living room, think of all the ways when you look around, look at the things you have in your living room. So sit there. If you need to take the phone, take the computer, whatever you're watching this on, go to your living room and sit there. Take a look around. What is currently plugged in? What do you have out that maybe smells? Uh, what are you using to clean? What are all the things that you can see? And start taking a look, taking stock of what you can switch. Your body, your family, your pets, your friends, your neighbors, they won't know it but they will thank you for this. It is such an easy switch for you to do and such small steps that we can make. And remember guys, we don't want you to toss it all, all at once. We don't want you to get rid of everything all at once. We want you to make these small, calculated, easy changes so that they add up overall to make massive impacts in your life. So anyways, that's it. Talking a little bit about the living room in our fragrance-free February. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions, obviously reach out to any one of us. And um, that's it. Enjoy the rest of February, guys.